this this is a topic that I'm really excited about because I'm the simpleton here. You guys know everything about this, and I want to be able to understand all the new science tied in with the old science as well. So, Maureen, take it over. Well, you know what? Thank you, Jim. Um, just to, for those of you who might be new, because a lot of people are coming on because this is such exciting information that we're going to be sharing tonight, or at least giving you a snippet of. I'm Dr. Maureen Hayes from Galveston, Texas, and I'm joined with Jim and Ann Glenn from San Antonio. Jim has a background in money, and Ann is a nutritionist and personal trainer. And then we also have Dr. Uh, Lee Osler from Washington State. He's a dentist and also the author of now four books on redox signaling, redox matter. How many? Did I miss one? Yeah, four. Redox matters, healthy matters, why it matters, and... I forgot the name of the last one. Progress. It man. matters. I think it's it matters, right? Um, progress so matters. Yeah. Oh, progress matters. There you go. Sure. Fantastic. And so what we're talking about a little bit, if you've not heard us before, you don't know why you were invited to this call. Um, our company has sort of um, led the field in redox signaling molecules. It's something that's in every single cell of your body, um, but we have less of, or maybe they're out of, in, they're out of balance as we get older because they're made in our mitochondria. And we've been able to stabilize those in a solution so that we have a bio replenishment agent that goes in, helps your cells do their job better. And um, the results are sometimes near miraculous. Your body is incredible. It's able to do many, many things. And we're just tapping into that potential. Um, so, but We've known for a while some of the things that it did, some we couldn't explain. We had a study that was done, um, I think it's been about six years now, the Torrent Lab study that looked at different genes and found that those genes were upregulated or the transcription of them was increased by 20 to 31%, which had amazing results. 100% of the, the participants in the study had this increase compared to the control study that had those guys had no change whatsoever. And interestingly enough, the control that was used was the saline solution that our product is made from. So let me also give a disclaimer. We are, although there's a lot of medical professionals here talking about this, and we have scientists that we brought on tonight that I'm about to introduce to you. This is not a medical company. This is not a medical product. It's, it's not meant to treat, diagnose, prevent, cure anything. We're just empowering the body to do what it has the innate wisdom to do. And when, when you give it the right tools, it can, it can perform those functions beautifully. So without further ado, to, to talk about the new science that's coming out is Hunter Dean and Dr. Andrea Borges from ASEA Corporate. So guys, take it away and, and share all this exciting new stuff that's coming out. Something real quick um, about our founder, that when he started this company, um, early, early on, and Nancy Tunnell, his daughter, and John Norton were sharing with us that, and then Tyler even shared up on stage that he, Virtus, uh, at the time was 69 years old. He started creating a, a book, and he had them alphabetized by what these molecules were helping people with. And what's crazy is that everything that's coming out now is validating what he knew back then. And it's absolutely mind-boggling to think that someone had the four, what is the word? Um, the forethought that of what this could be. And it's so awesome that Hunter and Dr. A are coming on and helping validate and put it in cement that what Virtus Norton to carry the dream on that we get to now do is just, it, it's mind-boggling. So uh, this is what's so cool with Hunter uh, and with Dr. Andrea is to validate what he already knew probably 15 years ago. So anyway, wanted to throw that in. Yeah, that's great. I, I, it's a really, really powerful thought to, to know that all those years ago, Virtus knew what the product did. And just now we're beginning to explain why it does what it does. Right. And that's a really exciting point for the company to be able to um, provide scientific validation and be able to explain why the product works in the body the way that it does. So we're really excited about this research. Um, I guess, Andrea, I'll kick it off and then I'll, I'll hand it over to you and you can kind of interject and we'll, we'll go from there. How's that sound? Sounds good. We can like talk about Okay. 
Great. Yeah. So one of the things hey, that I want quick, to... Hey, hey, Hunter, real quick, kind of go over your background. I'm sorry, Maureen. I know you're oh. laughing at me. You always do. Uh, can you kind of go over your experience? And when Dr. A, when you talk, kind of go over your experience so people kind of know uh, you're not just some kid off the block because you do look kind of young. Uh, right. You've got a lot, a lot of valuable, valuable experience that you brought to the table. Yeah. So uh, my name's Hunter Dean. I'm the vice president of production operations for ASEA. I've been with the company um, coming up on five years now. Um, my background is in chemical engineering. So that's what I studied in, in college and, and have experience doing is, is um, chemical engineering. Prior to ASEA, I was working in the oil and gas industry. Um, I grew up in Alaska, so that was kind of a logical step for me. Um, but now I'm here with ASEA and, and loving every minute of it. So that's my background, chemical engineering. That's kind of the side I'm coming from. Um, so I, I want to, I kind of want to establish a, a foundational understanding before we move into the research here. Um, and it's it, in order to understand NRF2, you have to understand how important stress, the concept of stress is to the body. By stress, we mean inflammation, oxidative stress. Um, a whole lot of things can, can be stress, but what happens is, is every single day, your body is exposed to some form of stress thousands of times per day. And what your body has to do to maintain its health, to maintain its wellness is respond to that stress. The efficiency or the effectiveness with which your body responds to that stress is very literally how good is your body at maintaining its health. And one of the main ways, one of the largest ways that the body responds to stress is through redox signaling molecules. Okay. Now, what is NRF2? NRF2 is the master switch that the body uses to respond to stress and inflammation. So we talked about maintaining your health by responding to stress. NRF2 is one of the main ways that your body responds to stress and maintains your overall wellness. Now, how does it do that? We call it the master switch, right? And there are, there are compounds like glutathione, which are antioxidant and protective proteins that are produced when this master switch NRF2 is turned on and upregulated. So then glutathione goes to work in the body responding to that stress and that inflammation. Andre, you want to kick it off from there and kind of talk about what we found in the study relating to NRF2? Yep, sure. And just uh, about my background, I'm from Brazil and my background is in biology and my PhD is in cell and molecular biology. I also have two postdocs, one that I finished in Brazil, another one in New Jersey. I also worked in Germany for WHO and the Rockefeller Foundation, doing research all this time. So ASEA, I used to say that I found my new passion at ASEA, and Redox is my new passion on science. <laughs> so, okay, just uh, to keep going a little bit about what Hunter just talked about. Uh, Oh, okay. I also love redox bio biology science. Sorry, I had to read that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we we had we had a study when I started at ASEA. I'm with ASEA for about three and a half years. When I started right right before COVID hit, uh, we had already had the study about on with the Tarad lab, and the Tarad lab found that that was five genes that were upregulated when the subjects that were in the study were or taken, they were taken ASEA. So ASEA was, and, and interesting is that when they stopped taking ASEA. Uh, You're good, Andrea. Here, yeah, we hear you well. Okay. And so when people, when the subjects stopped taking ASEA, these effects were gone. So this is very interesting and a very interesting um, result because it proved that these results, that they had the upregulation of five different genes 
were related to ASEA. Because when the subject stopped taking ASEA, the effects were gone. So from those genes, they, they screened those genes and they found out that those genes are re were related to different functions in our body, very different cellular functions. One of those functions were relate, was related to NRF2. And because of that, and with the knowledge that we know nowadays about NRF2, that it's a master switch and it turns on and off those protective proteins like glutathione. So we decided because of that to start working a little bit more with NRF2. And the results that we have so far and that were presented during general conference at convention, those results are amazing. And do we want to go through these results again or talk about? Yeah, yeah we, should, we should summarize the numbers. Um, but one thing I want to point out here really quick is we had two universities, one of which approached us with a grant to study this. This was, this was funded in part by um, the, the federal government in, in Australia. Um, so we had two universities, University of Western Sydney and the University of Bath in England. And both universities were studying NRF2. One university studied it on a SIA redox supplement, the blue bottle, and the other, or the other university studied it on Renew28. Both of these universities were astounded by what they found. They repeated these, these studies because they could not believe the results that they were getting. Um, and so not only were they repeating these studies, both universities repeated the studies, free. They didn't charge us for the extra because they wanted to make sure that what they were seeing was accurate. And both found the exact same thing in that NRF2 was significantly upregulated by these products. And so it's it, while we're as excited as can be about it, I want to drive home just how unique these results are in that the universities themselves did not believe it so much that they went and repeated the studies without charging us to do so. You forgot something, Hunter. In what Australia, did I forget? Yeah, in Australia, it was very, it was very funny. And I love talking to them when they, they mentioned that. They're like, we're so surprised with the results that we sent the, the of course we have an NDA and everything, but we sent the, they, they were saying that, we sent the bottle and the test to another facility not the university, to another facility, another lab to test it because we didn't believe it. So another person was testing it and they didn't even charge because they wanted to double check if it was correct. And the, resu the results were fantastic again. <laughs> exactly. So Andre, why don't we talk numbers here? Let's, we've kind of primed the, them to understand it. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk numbers and what was found on each product as far as upregulation of NRF2. Okay. Uh, let me just get my earphones because I think there are people that are not listening to me very well. Andrea, we hear you fine. Lee, or Lee yeah. and Maureen, you hear her okay? I can, yeah, you, I can hear her fine. Through clear. The one yeah. that's having an issue, um, maybe adjust your speakers. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the technical fine. issue on their end, Andrea. Yeah, no, I can, don't worry about it. Use this. It's an old fashioned, exactly. so it's fast. Maybe it's better now. Hey, Hunter, I don't know if you want to I show any it. slides. Uh, you can if you want. I don't know if that. Yeah, I can. I can share some slides here real quick. Let me do pull them up. It? Do you have them? Yeah, I've got right. them. I can pull them From up. General session. Yeah, yep. we can talk about numbers. Yeah, I think it's pretty common sense, Hunter, or maybe Lee or Maureen, but, but when you talk about the efficacy, uh, the upregulation, can you just kind of maybe dive into that a little bit? When you when we say that it, it's upregulating the glutathione, and then even in the genetic study, the 20 to 31%, Maureen, you were talking about that earlier. Um, can you maybe dig in a little bit? What does that mean, Maureen? Well, yeah, when we talk about the TAR lab study and we talk about a, a 20 to 31% um, increase in the transcription of those genes, 
genes like make proteins. And so when you're looking at that and you're, you're doing it faster, making the copies faster, you're producing more, more proteins that are going to have an effect in the body. Um, when we talk about efficacy, like one of the things that confuse people is that we knew from previous studies that taking our product increased the efficacy of glutathione by an SOD by like 500 to 800%. So that's like five times or eight times um, the efficacy, the how it worked, how efficient it was and what it was doing, meaning that a smaller amount could do more, that you were getting more out of those molecules. And so um, what we're seeing now is um, a 60% in the NRF2, it's an increase in the activity of that master switch from my understanding. Is that how you would explain it, Hunter? Yeah, exactly. And and the up the increase in activity of the NRF2 gene or pathway has trickle-down effects like the production of glutathione, like the production of other antioxidant and protective proteins. Um, so when you increase NRF2 by a certain percentage, you increase your body's ability to respond to stress and take care of itself. And Lee can probably talk to this pretty well, but the, the state of the art in medicine right now is really tying inflammation and stress to a lot of health challenges, right? There's a lot of things that are tied to this, this stress that happens in the body. And there are a lot of negative outcomes that, that are resultant from the stress in the body. So if your body can respond better to this, you, you really do have an enhanced overall wellness. I like to say, I like to say that uh, there's one word that's very important in this slide, that's resilience. And that's basically nowadays, uh, the, 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 the body resiliency is responsible, being or not being resilient is responsible for a lot of uh, challenges that our body uh, goes through. So, and NF2 is one of those uh, signals or pathways that will help our body to build this resilience. Right. So and if I could ask a question real quick, um, because of increasing the NRF2 pathway, we're actually increasing the body's production of glutathione as well. So I think previous studies said maybe, you know, that there was an uptick in the, in the production, but it was mostly the efficacy that was being affected. So we have both. We actually have both. So amazing. Could I ask Lee to do a clarification for me? Um, Lee, if you don't mind, with we say inflammation and oxidative stress. Could you please quickly explain the difference between those two and maybe what causes those, please? Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a good context question, isn't it? Because I can imagine somebody new uh, watching or listening to this is, is like wondering what, what in the heck we're talking about. Someone asked what NRF2 was about. NRF2 is called the nuclear factor erythroid 2 related factor 2, which is why we call it NRF2. Could you it's spell that, acronym. please? Could, it's, could it's, you spell that for me, please? Yeah, right. So <laughs> the point is, is it goes back to what Hunter said early on, and that is this is the body's way of regulating, you know, how we coexist in a world of stress. When we don't deal with stress, uh, and we're not talking necessarily emotional, psychological stress, we're talking uh, physiological stress that happens in the cellular environment. What <clears throat> we, we're all focused in today's day and age on all things inflammation, everything's about inflammation. That's kind of the last decade or so um, uh, focus. But the fun part about this NRF2 thing is to recognize that before inflammation happens, there's first oxidation. This oxidative stress in the cell is the step ahead of inflammation. And so while everybody's kind of focused on anti-inflammation, uh, reducing inflammation, what, what we have the opportunity with, you know, getting upstream in these, in these gene pathways is to be able to actually downregulate or to better control or manage the state of oxidation that's what's responsible for creating inflammation in the first place. It's that oxidative stress. It's the resilience or the ability to respond to the stress. And if we lack an ability, if we cannot um, 
uh, respond well to that stress, then we're going to have more sickness. So the, the context of this, when we talk about upregulating or increasing the, the gene expression, those are all um, you know, fancy scientific ways of saying that we become more resilient, more responsive to the problems, and we, we trigger or we switch on, we call it a redox switch, we switch on the mechanisms and the processes that are cell protective, meaning they, they increase our defenses. Um, in some circles, we call these the longevity genes, the survival genes. Uh, those, are, those are words that are commonly in use today, especially in the anti-aging arena. But oxidation is at the root of all this. And so these studies that we're, we're talking about, the reason why we're excited about them is because we have definitive, we now have definitive uh, proof that, um, that what ASEA has produced has the ability to flip the switch, to turn on this NRF2 transcription, which, which transcription is the gene process of turning on your DNA to evoke or produce an effect, meaning uh, producing antioxidants that help come back into the cell and reduce the oxidation. If you wanna stop inflammation before it starts, this is how you do it as you flip these switches and we now know how to do that. What, one thing that Dr. Dr. Osler said that I'd really like to reiterate because I think it's a powerful point is when you treat inflammation and there are many products out there and even pharmaceuticals that treat inflammation, you are treating a symptom when you have your body combat oxidative stress, you are combating the cause or the underlying issue, not just the symptom. And so by going straight to the NRF2 and upregulating or increasing NRF2 activity, you are, I hesitate to say treating, but combating the cause of inflammation rather than just merely the symptom of inflammation. So with that said, we'll move into the, the first study here with University of Bath. Um, we, with, with Bath, we studied Renew28 specifically and, and with Western Sydney ARS as a redox supplement. So the graph on the left is a control versus cells treated with Renew28. And in that scenario, you see a very significant 40% increase. Now, remember, this is a 40% increase of the master switch, the majority of your body's ability to combat stress and inflammation. But what's really interesting is when on the graph on the right, we use something called BSO. We'll, we'll call it a, uh, a blocker. What this simulates is a compromised cell that is unable to take care of itself or unable to produce its own glutathione through the NRF2 pathway. This is somebody who has significant health challenges. This is somebody who is under an extreme amount of oxidative stress, likely has high inflammation levels. This is what that BSO treatment simulates. And what is traditionally very difficult is to get a cell to upregulate its NRF2 activity once it is in this state. What we found is that despite being in this compromised state, Renew28 is capable of increasing NRF2 activity and the associated benefits thereof by 55% which is an absolutely huge number when you consider this was a compromised cell because of that BSO treatment. So that's something that we're really excited about. Not only does it work on healthy cells, it works on severely compromised cells as well. And in fact, it's even more powerful in that case. Um, and so when you're able to upregulate um, that NRF2 to such a significant um to a significant level, it's, it's no wonder people have amazing results on these products. Um, and just, and can I just add something? How do please, you want please. to go back there? Yeah. Um, the, the measurement that we, we use to, to identify NRF2 up or down regulated is this JSH that you can see there. JSH, GSH stands for glutathione. And 
the up or down regulation or the increase or decrease of glutathione, which is a protective protein, will will it is an indirect measurement that NF2 is being up or down regulated. So you measured the outcome. Can can yes. you talk a little bit because thinking about Renew28, can you speak a little bit to the application, how this was applied to the cells, what that mechanism was and and then um, I guess you were measuring the GSH levels to see what the um, the endpoint was, correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. Uh, skin, uh, as Hunter already explained, NF2 is related to oxidative stress, to inflammation, to all these uh, things that we don't want to have them in our body. Skin is the largest organ in our body. And it's exposed is the first thing that the environment will hit when we are in contact with everything that is external. So UV light, pollution, uh, everything that is in the environment, skin is the first thing that will be in contact with these things. And this can cause a lot of stress and it will trigger oxidative stress. UV, for example, for, from the sun, it will trigger oxidative stress. That's why we age, correct? So this uh, simulation that Hunter explained that it's happening there is when the glutathione is inhibited or those protective proteins that the, the cells, the skin cells usually produce when there is a lot of stress bombarding those cells, they, they eventually can stop producing it or producing more than only glutathione because there are several other protective proteins. So in this case, uh, Renew28 was able to retrieve this activity and to, to restore, I'm sorry, to restore this activity. So this is what it's the importance of this study, meaning that uh, your skin can be under stress, under oxidative stress, for example. And when we apply renutinate because of the redox signaling molecules that is in the renutinate, the, the function of the antioxidative stress uh, system can be restored. So your the 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 functionality of your skin in regards to this protection, the oxidative protection, can be restored. Okay, Hunter, do you mind for for me explaining one more time? I'm sorry, the the BSO with no BSO and with BSO treatment. I'm I'm not following that yet. If you don't mind. Yep, absolutely. So okay. on the left, no BSO treatment is a healthy cell, okay? Oh, okay. A cell with a BSO treatment would be, or would be similar to a compromised cell in able oh. to create its own glutathione due to stress, due to, oh. you know, so, inflammation. A healthy cell and a sick cell. Yep. We wanted to show that there was an effect on both. Healthy, sick, Ooh. right? And that, that BSO is not... It, 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 it's it's basically a simulation of a sick cell. It's not saying that the cell itself is sick, but it's blocking certain abilities in the cell. And what we're showing is Renew is powerful enough to overcome that blocker and help the cell begin to produce glutathione again. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. yeah. yeah and that's is. what we test. And the cells that were tested was cells from the skin. So... Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really interesting, those results. That's why we can correlate with what Maureen asked. Uh, how does that apply? So our skin is bombarded with oxidative things, right? Things that will cause damage to our skin. And uh, Renutrient 8 could restore this, the, the function of the cells regarding so station. So the one thing I want to I want to reiterate here before we go to the next slide um, is glutathione levels is what we're tracking here. 
Glutathione is what's produced when NRF2 is upregulated, right? If you stimulate NRF2, glutathione is made. So we have evidence here that glutathione is made. So what we said is we need evidence that the NRF2 pathway is what's responsible for this glutathione production. So what we did was we went and tested it. Now, this, this can get easy to get lost. So I'm going to do my best here to, to talk about what we're seeing here. On top are untreated cells, and the bottom row, row is treated cells. Everywhere in green is um, NRF2 activity, okay, in that first image under NRF2 column. The blue in the DAPI column is the nucleus of the cell. Now, what's important to know about NRF2 is NRF2 can't let's say go to work, so to speak, unless it is in the nucleus of the cell. No glutathione comes from NRF2 unless it is in the nucleus, okay? So in the untreated field, in that last column there, NRF2 plus DAPI, you can see that there is a lot of green outside of the nucleus. That means that NRF2 is not going to work making things like glutathione to help your body. When you add Renew28, look how more concentrated the green is around those blue nucleus. That is visual evidence that NRF2 is leaving the KEEP1 binding molecule, going to the nucleus and making compounds like glutathione to combat stress. So not only do we have evidence now that glutathione is upregulated significantly, both in healthy and sick cells, but we have visual evidence that NRF2 is being transcribed um, in, in, and expressed in the nucleus of the cell. And that is, that's what's responsible for the glutathione production. Hopefully that makes sense. I know this gets a little technical here, but the more green overlapping the blue means more NRF2 activity leading to glutathione production and combating inflammation and stress. Uh, just one thing, Hunter, there is a question here that I think it's important for us to, to clarify. Uh, what is glutathione exactly? So glutathione, we want to say that it's a protective protein. It's a protein that we have in our body. Our body can produce this protein and this glutathione will protect our cells, our tissues, our organs from oxidation, from uh, free radicals, from aging, from inflammation. It also, it also is the primary detox molecule in mm -hmm. Yeah. Part, part of the liver's uh, functionality in dealing with toxic molecules inside our body is to make them, uh, to make these uh, toxic uh, chemicals water soluble so that glutathione can then attach to them and, and eliminate them or excrete them through the kidneys and through the intestines. And so by upregulating glutathione, or up, I should say upregulating NRF2, I, I mean, I just hope that people looking at this slide uh, uh, can appreciate how, how stunning this is. Um, this, this is like striking gold in a gold mine to find this kind of a result because this, this NRF2, uh, we call it um, transmigration, it's moving through the cell from the cytoplasm into the nucleus, which is where it binds or, or attaches itself to the DNA so that it turns on the DNA process that makes a protein that we call glutathione so that glutathione can come back in and be the antioxidant to reduce all the free radicals and the damaging oxidation, plus all the detox. And we see this, there's a lot of people, uh, my wife included, after she began uh, using the SIA, um, that experienced this, this uh, detox reaction. And people think it's a bad thing because they don't, it makes them feel, not feel good sometimes, but it's suddenly the cells are mobilizing and they're removing the toxins and eliminating them, which you haven't been able to do very well up to this point in time. And so it's a really good thing to work through because now you can detox 
as well as do all the antioxidant protection. And that's why we call these the survival genes. These are the longevity genes. This is what makes you live longer and be healthier. Yeah. And, and, and so, so, so to speak, NRF2 helps your cells take out the trash. It helps get the bad stuff out, right? And that's, that's part of how it combats oxidative stress and therefore inflammation. So again, I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time on this slide, but it basically the, the main point here is we have visual evidence that NRF2 is going to the nucleus and being activated, um, transcribed and expressed to combat inflammation and oxidative stress. Uh, I, I just want to, to make sure that everyone is on board with that because I, I read some questions about NRF2 and this is how uh, Renew28 would work in this case. We have Renew28, Renew28, we apply Renew28 in the skin, the redox molecules will activate NRF2 or, um, yeah, will activate, let's say that. Renew28 has redoxyl molecules that will activate NRF2. NRF2 will go to the nucleus and the nucleus will have the signal that the cell can produce glutathione. So this is the, the pathway that is happening. We do not take NF2 or it's not a pill or it's not nothing like that. Our body produces NF2 in response to Renew28. So NF2 is in the middle. So you have Renew28 that is stimulating NF2 that will increase consequently the production of glutathione. Hey, Hunter. Yeah. Um, is it not fair for me to assume um, that if Renew is doing this to the skin, if we drink the ASEA, the liquid's going to do the same thing on the inside? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Which I mean, is why we're testing of, NRF2 for both products. So guys, it's not just the skin. It's going all the way through your whole body, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Yep. So that That's segues nicely. Yep, that, that, that ties us in nicely to the next slide here. So we're moving away now from University of Bath and Renew28. Um, we're now moving to University of Western Sydney, where they looked into NRF2 um, upregulation with the ASEA Redox supplement product. Um, Andrea, do you want to take this? Yeah, sure. Uh, those, this study was performed, as Hunter said, by... Western Sydney University, and this is the, the place where they send our samples to several different places to be tested because they didn't uh, believe the results they, they were seeing. They tested a CL Redox supplement the same way or in a way very similar to the Renew28, and they put the, they added actually a CL Redox supplement to the in the culture medium so they cultivated the cells with a CA redox supplement and then they measured and if NF2 was upregulated or not. And this is what they saw. They saw that actually uh NF2 was very and surprisingly upregulated because when they see the ingredients in ASEA redox, which is water and salt, and then the electrolysis, that's the process that goes to, to produce redox signal molecules. Scientists usually, they don't believe that they can do all these nice things because redox signal molecules are not very stable. And this is the, the magic of our product. The, the, the way that these molecules are stable. So they sent to different places to be tested and they, they all got the same results. That NRF2, and which is the, 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 the switch molecule that will turn on and can be turned on and off, it was upregulated by 60% compared to control. So the cells that did not 
receive a CL Redox supplement. Andrea, I think that's a, an important point that I want to make sure people didn't miss is that these these universities, when we were designing these studies, they were skeptical because they 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 kind of admitted like, okay, maybe you are making redox signaling molecules in your reactor, but by the time we get it, by the time we expose these cells to these products, there's no way that they're signaling molecules there in order to have any effect. And so when they saw these results, they're like, holy cow, how are these still there? How are they still active? How are they still having this 60% upregulation of NRF2? And for that reason, they were kind of in disbelief and had to retest. So when we talk about this breakthrough of the st stability of this product and the stabilization of redox signaling molecules, it really positions us as leaders in this space. Mm -hmm. You know, scientists on the forefront of research at these universities looked at, you know, looked at us through Zoom and said, hey, there's no way it's stable. There's no way it's going to have an effect. And we said, hey, well, let's test it. And then they had to test it again and again and again until they were convinced, wow, this does work. You do have stable redox signaling molecules. They so I think that's an important 12 point. Times. 12, 12 times. times, yeah. yeah. yeah may, may I underscore what you just said? Because we the, making redox molecules is not the, is not the magic thing. Mm -hmm. We've been made in science. We've been making redox molecules for decades. They, you know, um, that's not new. And if you look around at your cleaning products and, you know, everything, the science of making a redox or a reactive molecule has, has been around a long time. The secret here, and that's why this is such a stunning thing, is the ability to stabilize it so that it has such shelf life where it can be used. And as you're looking at this screen, just to tie it to the previous uh, discussion, um, but, you know, these are fancy words on there. You look at that second uh, bullet point, the glutamate cysteine ligase catalytic subunit. That's a fancy word that says enzyme. That's the enzyme that's responsible for stitching together the amino acids that are making up what glutathione is. And the glutathione as transferase is what is responsible for its ability in the liver to detoxify. So that activates its detoxification ability. So th this is there's just some magic in this. And the fact that this, these are stable molecules that have ongoing uh, residual effect over time is what is what Hunter and Andrea are talking about here is because there is nowhere else in the world of science right now that comprehends what this is what this is about and that's why having it tested over and over and over to confirm it they had to do that because it's just it's so it's it's unheard of until now <clears throat> So let's 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 just summarize here the research and then maybe we'll we'll do a kind of a zoom out you are here map and what ASEA plans for the future and what we're going to do with this research to make sure it's accessible for everybody. Um, so in both studies um, conducted by Western Sydney as well as Bath on ASEA Redox supplement, the blue bottle, um, and Renew 28 we saw increase, significant increase in NRF2 activity by up to 60%. When that NRF2 pathway is upregulated, protective proteins like glutathione are made, and that glutathione goes to work helping your body um, respond to stress, oxidative stress, and therefore combating inflammation, okay? NRF2 is the master switch. So if you're upregulating the master switch by 60%, there is a huge effect on your body's ability to respond to stress and inflammation. Now, as far as those studies go, um, where we are right now in the research is we're working on the white paper to summarize these results that white paper will be available on the virtual office by the end of the year. This, that will summarize all these results. It'll discuss the method. It will discuss how we did the experiments, how many times were they repeated. It'll ha have all the juicy data in there. And then the plan is, is we're going to work on that document and work to publish in a journal next year. It takes several iterations of the white paper, several 
um, I guess, planning sessions and editing sessions and going through peer review. So it'll take us a little time, but the plan is to publish this research in a recognized and reputable journal um, sometime in 2024. Um, in addition to the publication, in addition to the white paper, um, we are currently working with the marketing and UX team to build one page informational shareables to um, we're adding um, short, small images and videos that will be available on the app to explain this in simple ways to help share this information, all supported by the white paper that will be um, available for those who want to dig in deep on the virtual office. Um, where I would like to kind of finish here. And if, if you guys have some other thoughts, then I'd, I'd love for you guys to chime in. But this is only one of many pathways that were proposed by the Torrent Lab study. The Torrent Lab study proposed over 15 different pathways, all contributing to different areas of health. We decided that we wanted to look at NRF2 because of its relationship to stress and where the medical field right now is in, the, in, in stressing the importance of your body's resilience to stress. But what I want to emphasize is that ARS, a CR redox supplement, these amazing redox signaling molecules work on more than just this one pathway. We're only playing with this study one key of 88 keys on the keyboard and ASEA plays them all. And so as we look to our vision at ASEA, to become and stay the recognized global leader in cellular health and redox-based technologies, our commitment to performing research, looking into these different pathways and publishing that research remains unwavering. So that's kind of where we are, zoom out research and development roadmap. Um, Jim, Anne, Maureen, Lee, Andrea, am I missing anything? Do we need to, we need to touch on something else? You know, oh, if you don't mind, oh, go ahead, Andrea. Sorry. No, no, I'm good. Oh, I, I was just going to point out the fact that it's it's mind boggling. There are entire companies that are dedicated to products that help to increase NRF two, and that's the the sole thing that they do. That's the basis of their whole whole business. And here we are with a product that, like you said, one key on the keyboard. It's absolutely. I don't think any of us knew just how incredible this was, what we have our hands on. So thank you so much for this. Yeah. I, I think there's going to come a day when we're going to say in the marketplace, we're going to say, why stop at NRF2? Everybody, you know, everybody else is like, we're, we're an NRF2 activator. You know, there's th those companies are ubiquitous almost at this point. And there, there'll be more because they all recognize that that's one of the pivotal pathways in the anti-aging you know, discussion. But to be able to say, well, we don't stop at NRF2 because these are redox sensitive switches we're talking about. And that's the ability of these active, these bioactive molecules affect hundreds and hundreds of these redox sensitive switches to turn on their respective pathway genes. This is exciting. Very much. So I was going to uh, say, you know, the other pathways, as Hunter was saying, uh, about eventually to to go into it more. But, you know, the other ones work on brain, heart and hormones, all these important other areas. So it's pretty exciting to see that y'all so deep into this pathway being immune system and the body's ability to fight off things that go on wrong. But um, we came in eight years ago. You know, all we had at uh, Dr. Ward's book, and in that book, it's, it's it's an easy, short read, but it has the scale, which is what the redox signaling does. It gets the body into balance. One side of the scale is your oxidative stress with diseases, and the other side is inflammation. You, you know, you fall somewhere in there as your body gets rogue cells and. Here, we're able to now consume these stabilized molecules and start seeing the body. Back then, we, you know, we tried to have it somewhat of a simple explanation. And now y'all, uh, smart scientists, people got added to 
to the corporate. I remember Andrea was introduced at one of the uh, events, how exciting it was that we've got y'all to even more validate what we kind of knew eight years ago, but we were like, now we have something to sink our teeth into. And then, you know, in 2017 comes the gene study, and then y'all change the back of the bottle, which is so perfect, because that, as Terry Latham would say, that is your, your advertisement. The back of the bottle paragraph sums it all up, and here we, now we know why. So it's, you know, people need to not go out there and feel like they have to know all this stuff, but use the back of the bottle, realize that, hey, we have the very thing that's going to help our body. We're the only company. So I'm super excited that the stuff that y'all are about to bring out in print in December, um, that'll be really cool to have in the app as well. So thank you. I asked um, Scott Aldred this question last week. I want to ask you and Andrea, why is it that this is being called the most significant breakthrough in medical, whatever, how you want to say it, ever, I, I say. But why hasn't anybody copied this? Why hasn't anybody else been able to mimic to take our bottle? And you know every pharmaceutical has it in their labs trying to reverse engineer it. Why can't they? Why doesn't anybody else have this? I see the smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, why don't, why don't you start? That's our trade secret. <laughs> exactly. But 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 usually people can figure it out after a period of time, right? Yeah. I mean, but mm. they can't with this. This is different. And I and people need to understand that because we're the only company that has it. And there, there's I believe it's divine, but this is so unique as an ex stockbroker to see something like this that only one in one company has in the world. 14 years on the market, 33 countries. That's crazy that no one's copycatted this. They've they've tried, that's for sure. Um, I think there's I think there's a couple of reasons for that, Jim. And and one is remember that this technology was um, originally held by a pharmaceutical company, and they had done over a decade of research to get it to where it was when Virtus Norton purchased the technology. So there's that. There, there was a you know a lab that was ahead of its time looking into a technology. Virtus kind of being visionary and understanding that there was really something to this technology, purchased it, and then filed patents on the technology. So that's the initial protection was is nobody could try and do what we do because there's patents. The second part of that is if you look at the process today and the product today, it is vastly superior to where it was even eight years ago. So not only do we have patents protecting this process, protecting these products, we have over thousands of points of trade secrets and intellectual property that people would have to figure out before they could produce this product in the manner that we do. We've seen companies try and build a redox solution just like ours because they realize, hey, this is where medicine is going. This is where the field of health is going, is redox. And so it only makes sense that people would try and grab a piece of the pie, so to speak. Every time we find a product that is a redox signaling molecule product, we purchase it, we test it, and we have not found one to be anywhere near the concentration of redox signaling molecules. Initially, the stability is nowhere near where it needs to be to be effective. And the purity is not where it needs to be to be effective. So we are we are quite literally at least a decade um, beyond anybody else at this point because of the strategy that Virtus Norton employed with the patents, with the trade secrets. It's just simply something that that nobody has been able to to replicate outside of what we have kind of claimed. Um, Morning and Dr. Osler, you guys are. Maureen, you're no longer practicing, but you maintain your licenses, correct? Um, Lee, you're still in practice. To you two, how big of a deal is this? I mean, if if someone, I mean, I know you were approached a while back, Maureen, that salt water, Salt Lake City tastes like pool water, all that fun stuff. But did you ever think you would see anything this massive? And now these new studies coming out, did you ever in your wildest dreams think something like this would be available on the open market? 
No, but, th- you know, thank God it is. You know, I think if it had been owned by a pharmaceutical company, it would have been a very different um, application. I remember when I first met Virtus and, you know, those of you who have heard my story, you know, my husband is a researcher. He's he's a practicing physician, but he also does bench research. Um, and he's one of the most brilliant researchers on the planet. So let's just add a little bit more to that. So uh, <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. He is pretty brilliant. Um, but so 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 when we were looking at salt water from Salt Lake City, it was sort of a, a big leap to get over that. We were not just skeptical, I would say cynical. And we met we met Virtus. And what was interesting about it was that the the company that Hunter was talking about had done millions of dollars worth of studies and they knew how powerful it was. Um And it's amazing because I don't think we've ever thought about something working like this at the cellular level, but, and people say, how can it work on so many different things? Well, it's kind of like if you, if you put a battery, you can use a battery for, for a radio or for, you know, flashlight or for a number of different things. It's that exchange of electrons that Hunter's always talking about, you know, getting to um, making things happen. So we're energizing the cells. The cells already have their marching orders, right? They know what they're supposed to do. So this is a foundational thing that affects every cell in the body, which is just absolutely amazing. And I know when I talked to, to Virtus and he said, we know how powerful it is. We're ahead of the science, but we know also it's 100% non-toxic. So we're going to take it to the people and let science catch up with us. And it's so incredible to be here at this moment where science is catching up, where the universities are coming to us with ideas and studies that they want to do. Yeah, this is a whole new game because, you know, a lot of people, when we originally were funding the studies as a company, you know, people would say, well, of course you got these, these great results because you paid to get those results. And, you know, really we were the only ones who wanted the, you know, the answers at that point. So of course we were the ones paying for the studies, but that's not what's happening here. We have outside people coming. The science is catching up with us because this is amazing. And we need to get it out to more and more people because as a physician to have something this powerful and totally non-toxic is literally a gift. It's truly a gift. So. Okay. Two, two more things from you, Maureen. Um, you had the chance to go back into your practice and hang up a shingle, but you didn't. Two, the pebble in the water. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I was a, a I'm an anesthesiologist and pain specialist, and there um, there was a physician that was extremely high paying job in Charleston, South Carolina, which is a city I absolutely adore. That's where I went to medical school. My whole family lives there now. And my husband was like, oh, you should apply for it. But I was doing a SIA and I, I love sharing a SIA. And this is going to sound terrible. But I said, do you think they will make me come into work every day? Because that could be, you know, a <laughs> big deal breaker. You know, so anyway, from my standpoint, to be able as a physician, to be able to educate people about something that they can turn around and share with the next person that you don't have to be a doctor, you don't have to come into an office to learn about this or get a prescription for it. All you have to do is open up your mouth and share with people. And like Jim was saying, be that pebble. When you drop that pebble into the into the lake, there's going to be a ripple from it. And it can start with you and that will grow bigger and bigger and bigger until it's all over the world. And that's what we're doing here. My efforts as a physician are magnified so many times because of the people I share it with who then share it with others. Now you never would have had back doing what you were doing before. What, what's that? You, were, so you that, never could have done that as a doctor. No, you can only deal with the person. You can't train your doctor. patients to do what you were doing. <laughs> no, and, <laughs> and no. And, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so fascinating because as good a doctor as I was, my patients didn't show up the next week with a room full of people. <laughs> you know, they, might, they might share one at a time. But, but here I can impact so many people's lives with something so simple, but so incredibly miraculous. It's such, a, it's such an honor to be a part of this. Cool. Lee, real quick, and I do have, I want to have Hunter and uh, Dr. Andrea close with a, a question. Lee? How big of a deal is this? Well, you know, this is going to be really big because you've got big pharma eyeing this whole this whole arena. 
Uh, they call it anti-aging. And for the next 20 to 30 years, anti-aging is going to be the rage. Um, these, these switches, these transcription factors that we were talking about earlier, Big Pharma has their eye on them in the research centers because they're, they're looking for drugs that can go individually and affect individual switches that are associated with specific pathways that they want to do something with. It'll be a pharmaceutical. It'll make them billions of dollars. It'll be under physician supervision. And it's kind of the doorway to gene therapy in the future. But the big, the big tent that this is all fitting in is anti-aging. And so this is the, the idea of that a rising tide, you know, raises or lifts all boats. Um, we're just, we're, we're just, <laughs> we're the only ones that have a solution to the entire redox landscape. All these hundreds of switches, we're the ones that can universally blast all of them. I call it awakening the inner doctor. We have a healing capacity in us that when it's activated, we can, in, we can heal, but it has to be activated or turned on. And that's not something that works really well the older we get. And so, you know, if you wanted a truth serum, if you wanted to have, uh, you know, the, the, the real anti-aging, um, you know, be the, be the fountain of youth, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's about activating this redox landscape. And that's what we have our hands on. So exciting. Yes. Okay, Hunter and Dr. Andrea, what does it feel like to be leading this research, to be having these universities call you guys, and you get to have all this knowledge up in your head of what's coming? You guys have to be bursting with excitement and overwhelming joy to know what we already have is just going to be validated more, and you guys have all the knowledge. This is you're the head of the snake. I mean, this is awesome. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, it's thrilling. Hunter can <laughs> Hunter can tell how uh, I, I'm always knocking at his door with like, "That's the best, that's the best." Oh, did you see the result? Look at this. Because of course, we are doing more research than those ones that we just presented. So it's so exciting and as scientists this is like you said uh jim it's overwhelming all this this results and how how true all these things are and how real we can bring science into our life in such a healthy way because uh the way that redox molecules in the acia water work it's so natural. It's not that you are taking something. It's not that you're taking a, a supplement like a thousands of pills. Of course, sometimes we need those. But the foundation, the base of everything are the redox molecules. And it's amazing how we can uh, promote resilience in our body taking uh, a sea water. Honor, it's amazing. Uh, Andrea, Andrea is such a such an awesome person to work with. She's truly passionate about redox science. I often find her in her office after hours looking at research and I have to tell her to go home. Um, she's so excited about the topic. Um, I, it, it's it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it really is such an honor to be part of a company that is on the forefront of of any type of research, but specifically redox signaling molecules that have so many benefits for people around the world. Um, to, to be totally honest with you, um, while it is exciting, um, from my seat on the bus, at times it's humbling um, to, to go to convention and see the hope and, and the changed lives that result from this product. Um, and, and to see that I have kind of responsibility in making sure things are moving forward. That's something that, that I and Andrea take with, with a, a high level of, of, of seriousness and something that is not lost on us. Um, this, this technology changes people's lives. Um, and our science team and our R&D team is absolutely committed to leveraging this technology to be as beneficial for as many people around the world as possible. And it's something that we take very seriously, as exciting as it may be. 
Um, Wait, Maureen, I've got one. It's for all of you guys. For the world. For the world, yes. Maureen, I want you to, um, this might be, I don't know. Um, you've know, you've been here the longest. You've been around Virtus. What would Virtus be saying with all of this right now? I knew it. <laughs> I think That's exactly what I wrote down. I told you. Yeah, I think Virtus knew. You know, he he's brilliant. You know, I I just adore Virtus and. I think he could see the big picture and he could see how powerful this was going to be. He may not have known all the nuances of how it worked, of course. And to have this validation, you know, <laughs> is is just amazing. So I don't think Virtus is surprised at all. I think he has a, a deep sort of innate knowledge, wisdom that this is something very, very special and it's going to be really big. It already is big, but I think we, we're just scratching the surface. Well, guys, this is awesome. Um, as I always say, this is one of our best ones ever. Hunter, Dr. Andrea, uh, Maureen, Lee Osler, thank you. Next week, guys, uh, I am really excited about next week. If anybody here knows Ed Weems, oh, don't yeah, miss next it. week. He don't miss next Friday. Take what we have now, what you just learned, and then come back with Ed, and you're going to be so fired up to go out and share this with people. Just don't miss next Friday. Guys, thank you. Lee, this will be up on the Redox uh, Matters in about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, this has been awesome. Again, Hunter, thank you. I know you're doing a lot of these meetings, you and Dr. Andrea, uh, but this was fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so, so much, especially on a Friday night. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you, guys. God bless. Bye-bye. Love you, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all.